Welcome to Lafayette, Louisiana, Southern Louisiana. Today I'd like to talk about this Ginu that I had modified. I purchased two years ago from l and Marine in Defuniac Springs, Florida. The Ginu was originally designed by Harley Jean and uh, his legacy continues today through his family. And there's a variety of boats that you can purchase, but I bought the 15 foot, four inch Ginu. And I like to showcase these modifications. South Louisiana is really rich in culture and history and heritage. The Atakapaw Indian was indigenous to this area and the Acadians collaborated with them uh, during their exile from Nova Scotia. And in order to truly see Southern Louisiana in the wetlands, you almost need a boat to, to see the true beauty of the majestic cypress trees and oak trees. And you can see it from the bridge, you can see it from the bank, but it's just, doesn't serve justice unless you actually have a boat. And sometimes bigger is not always better. And I chose a Ginu because it's small and compact. I had to utilize every available space on this boat to accommodate all the stuff that I needed to modify. I'd like to thank my brother for allowing me to use his shop to make all my modifications. Everything on the boat that I modified and had to bond, I used the right stuff. The right stuff made by Permatex, it's some good stuff. The right stuff is the good stuff. You can bond just about anything with it. Not just marine, you can make gaskets, whatever you want to do with it. Really, really good stuff. When you first get this boat, it's going to be, it's going to be just, just the hull. The trailer and hull by itself. So everything you see here, I modified. Okay, so when you first get the boat, they have a, a plastic handle right here on the bow of the boat. And I took that plastic handle off and I modified it with this splash plate. Whenever I slow down or take off, sometimes it wants to catch a little bit of water. So this splash plate keeps the water at bay. I also put on top of this splash plate an access panel, which makes it accessible to do maintenance on my battery because my battery is actually in the front of the boat. Take this footrest, move this footrest, and you can see I located my battery on a little battery compartment area here, which keeps the uh, boat from porpoising. Uh, if anything, I need to have more weight in the back than the front because this alleviates a lot of the, the bounce on the boat with this Optima battery. And I have this footrest just to kind of make the person in the front kind of relaxed. And uh, you can understand that the battery in the front and a 230 pound sidekick on the water, it, it's almost center gravity is too, too far forward. I need to bring it back a little bit. So I need to have a gas tank, ice chest, everything in the back to kind of uh, level off the center of gravity. I added this quick release uh, LED lights and all it is is a couple of clips right here. You clip them off and you can stow them in your center console once sunrise comes, you know, and you know, after you hunt or whatever you fish in maybe, you can just, these little quick release lights, just snap right on and snap right off with some little quick release pins. And I also have this uh, trolling motor bracket that I, I designed and had welded up. Real, real neat, very functional. Also what I'd like to point out is that uh, I counterboard this plate right here for my attach point for my trolling motor. So once this thing is screwed in, it fits right in and that trolling motor is not going anywhere, man. It's, it's a, a, a counterboard a hole. I had it welded and measured and it's, it fits perfect, man. That trolling motor is not going anywhere. And I also have this animal caller. You can call crows, coyotes. They have rabbit in distress, and it's a lot of fun, man, to bring those crows in. It's, it's pretty neat. And I also put these running lights. I have my starboard and port lights that I had to cut out and install those. I have these little bandolier holders for my shotgun shells. If, if you're on a squirrel hunt, harvesting squirrels in the basin, this really comes in handy. What I did here is whenever I installed this seat, I wanted to transfer the load of this seat because it kind of flexed. I felt it did anyway, especially if you put a pedestal on it. So I incorporated this 63,000 aluminum plate to help to transfer the load from that seat. And I have some cup holders here, which it attaches to the gun or anywhere along the boat. You can have this cup holder and it, it, it stays in place and you can put it wherever you want. These cleats, I have eight different anchor cleats on the boat, which I bonded with the right stuff. Right stuff is some good stuff, and it, it holds. You're not gonna pull this off. You're not gonna pull it off. 
and I have eight locations in, throughout the boat with uh, you can tie down ice chests or whatever you may want to tie down. I have this, uh, this weapon holder here. It's a, a soft pouch holster in case you ever run across any problems on a hunting or fishing trip, you have something to fall back on. The fiberglass boat is going to get scratched. You just have to deal with it because what I deal with the scratches, I just come back and paint the scratch marks to make it somewhat blend in with the camouflage paint. And this gunnel, whenever you first purchase the boat, is going to have 12 inch spaces on these rivets. And well, I called uh, Titusville and I got them to send me some more rivets and I added a, some more rivets to help transfer the load from that gunnel. I did the same thing on the back seat with this, with this pedestal. Added a transfer plate. It just eliminates the flex, especially with this arm. You know, you got 200 pounds up here and it just doesn't flex at all with this plate on here. I have a survival ax in case you need it. In case you come across a log you need to cross, just pins in and out, ax comes right off. I have another soft, good holster for the pistol in the back. Back here on this motor, which is pretty neat, is I put an extension on my handle, on my tiller handle. And most extensions, you, you lose your, your kill switch on the tip of the handle. So what I did is I put a rod inside here, touching my kill switch. I drill the hole, I put a bolt here, and I still have my kill switch now, because that rod comes all the way through here, and I still have my kill switch. So you don't lose that uh, security of having a kill switch in the palm of your hand when you're on step. I want to point out that I counterboard my, uh, my jack plate. I did the same thing with the little uh, attachment screw. I counterboard this hole right here. So once it's screwed on, that thing is on for good, man. It's not going anywhere. It's screwed on, it fits perfect, and uh, it's not going anywhere. And also, I added a tachometer. What I did is I made a bracket right here and I bonded it with the right stuff, which is the good stuff. And a, a tachometer is a must on a little motor like this because you want to know what your prop is doing at all times, you know, with the load you have. Maybe you need a four blade prop, maybe you need a three blade prop. But with a tachometer, it'll tell you everything you need to know about the motor. And I was able to capture that with this tachometer. I added this little shelf back here. This shelf. It's a pretty cool little shelf on roller bearings. You can put whatever you want in it with a little lock on it. And it's located underneath my jack plate support. I put this jack plate on here because my cavitation plate was slightly lower than the bottom of the plane of the boat. And the boat was lugged. So I put this jack plate and just to kind of reinforce the jack plate, I built this plate here and it helps transfer the load. And then I added my, my light, my rear light right here, my stern light. It just kind of beefs up this area pretty good back here. I have a bilge pump. My bilge pump is located back here. All the wires for all my electrical is running through my gunnels. If you come around here and, and you look right here, I have this switch panel. I put a USB plug. You can put that anywhere. I got two more plugs in the front. And I got my bilge pump, my bow, and my stern light switches here just on this little panel. All my wires are run through this gunnel and they come, they come out here. That's the only wires you can see in this spiral wrap, so pretty neat. Going back to the front, this is my switch panel. I have, I have a shutoff valve, I have a shutoff switch here. This turns everything on and off with one key. And then when I shut it off, she's asleep. There's no power going to anything. And that's how I have a little trickle charger right here that I plug in when I'm not running it, and it recharges my battery. And this right here is for my lights, for my LED lights right here. And on this, on this panel here, I got a fuse. I got two 12 volt connectors. You can put that USB plug up here also. And that's my, that's my battery shut off. This seat here didn't normally come with a cushion seat. So I added this cushion seat. What I did is I added a metal doubler on the bottom to, to transfer the load. And then I, I screw in my cushion seat. And I also put a spring loaded hinge right here. So all you have to do is lift the seat and it stays up. You don't have to physically hold it up and dig, dig for something in your center console. It's real accessible. And right here, here's a, my little 380. This is my little James Bond uh, pistol. I got it tucked away underneath this seat. And that's the way that works. In this seat, I have all my survival stuff. I have some lighter fluid, steel wool with a nine volt battery makes a great fire. I got all kind of stuff. And this is a removable, removable case right here. I got all my survival, my fire pistons, my cigarette lighters, to build a fire, whatever you need, survival 
survival, survival. Backwoods of Louisiana, you definitely don't want to be lost out near Chafalaya Bates and unprepared. And then I just added this handhold right here that uh, it's pretty neat the way I designed it. They got a metal doubler transferring the load on the inside with a couple of hat sections on the inside. And I got a couple two inch spacer here with my saddles here that uh, just really, really makes it stout. And then I, I made a backrest out of rope. So if you get in a bind and you need some rope, you just slide this off and you got all the rope you need. And you have to have a fire extinguisher in the boat. It's, it's Louisiana regulations for this, this size boat, which I just mounted it on the floor. So when I brought the boat back from Defuniac Springs, Florida, at L, from l and Marine, I had a couple of divots on side of my gunnels. So what I did is I added these, these little chafe plates for whenever I strap it down. It's just a chafe plate for my uh, strap, not to, not to mess up the, uh, the gunnels. No disrespect to Ginu in, the, uh, in Titusville, Florida, but the boat comes with this little emblem and uh, I hold dear to my heart. I'm not going to get rid of it, but I just didn't want it on, on the side of my boat. It gets hooked up on branches and everything else and probably just get broken off. So these bunks here, what I did was I liquid shimmed these bunks to the bottom of the boat. Before I did that, I put this uh, kill protector. Now you're not going to find a kill protector on just any boat because the front of the boat has such a tight radius that unless you cut a section out of this kill protector, you're not going to get it to stick on there right. So what I did is I put this kill protector on here and then I liquid shimmed my bunks here because if you have a roller that keeps rolling on that kill protector, eventually it's gonna come unbonded. So once it was liquid shimmed, where the kill protector is on the bunk, I shaved away about a quarter of an inch. So actually this bunk is being supported by either side of the kill protector. So there's not a whole bunch of pressure right here. And then on my, on my bunks in the back, I wrap them with this bunk wrap. It's a caliber bunk wrap and it makes it real easy to slide off the trailer. And uh, we're about to take this thing out and I'll introduce you to my buddy, John J. Rambo, AKA Johnny. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoy it.